Hi, and welcome to lesson 6 on Maxwell's Laws 2. In this lesson, we will derive the remaining two Maxwell's equations, and we're going to begin with Maxwell's third equation. So in the previous lesson, we saw how static, electric, and magnetic fields behave, and we derived the following two Maxwell's equations. The first one was relating the flux of an electric field through an enclosed area, and we saw that it just relates to the sum of all the charges within that uh, area. And we also derived its differential form, which related the divergence of the electric field to the charge density. And similarly for the magnetic field, we saw that the uh, flux of the magnetic field through an enclosed surface is always equal to zero, because there are no magnetic monopoles, and equivalently, its divergence uh, in the enclosed volume is also equal to zero. But there is no time dependence in these equations. If the time changes, the, the fields are still static. So this is the job of the last two Maxwell's equations, which we are going to derive in this lesson. So let's begin by considering a magnetic field passing through a conducting loop. So we have the following setup. We've got some source of uh, magnetic fields, for example, a bar magnet, and this is our conducting loop. Now what happens when we change the magnetic field? So how we can do that by changing the size of the magnet, so we will increase the magnitude of the magnetic field, or we can change the direction of the magnetic field. How do we do that? We can just simply move this magnet in and out of the loop, like this. And what that does, it actually produces an electric uh, current going in this loop. And depending on which way we move the magnet, the direction of the current will also change. And this is known as Faraday's law of induction. So we notice that a changing magnetic field induces an electric field. We can also uh, consider the magnetic field to be static, and we can play around with the loop. For example, we can increase its size, or we can change the orientation of the area. So instead of having it to the, uh, perpendicular to the magnet, we can just have it at some angle. And experimentally, what we observe is that the size of the induced electric field is proportional to the orthogonal area. Here the area is the area enclosed by the loop, so it's this area right here intersecting the magnet. So what we can say is the following, that the induced current in the loop is due to an electromotive force produced by the changing magnetic field. Now this word electromotive force is a rather archaic word that's sort of stick, still sticking around, but really there is no force. Re what it means is that the magne changing magnetic field produces um, potential difference, or it produces a voltage in the, in the loop. And we observe that the EMF, the electromotive force, is proportional to the change of the magnetic field, dot product with, uh, with the area. So we say that the electromotive uh, force is equal to the rate of change of the magnetic flux. Now you see that there's a minus there, so why is there a minus there? We're going to look at it in the following couple of slides. The reason behind it is that the induced EMF is negative in order to oppose the change that the uh, magnetic field is causing. For example, we have the following scenario. We've got our loop, and we've got some magnetic field B1 passing through the loop. And now what we do is we increase the magnitude of this loop. So we, produce, we uh, crank up the strength of the magnetic field until it reaches some value B2, which is larger than the original um, magnitude of the field B1. And as we said, due to this change, we generate a current. Now the question is, in what direction is the current flowing in the loop? So let's consider what happens if uh, it's flowing counterclockwise. So we've got our magnetic field here, and we've got uh, the induced current flowing in the loop in the counterclockwise direction. Now, this current flowing in the, in the loop also induces magnetic field. And the direction of the magnetic field can be determined by the right-hand rule. So if you point our thumb along the direction of the field, 
our remaining fingers will point in the direction of the induced magnetic field. And actually, if the current is going counterclockwise, the magnetic field is also pointing up. So the induced current also induces a new magnetic field. So we are increasing the strength of the magnetic field. But by doing that, we are also increasing the strength of the current in the loop. And this creates a positive feedback loop, which is just increasing the current, increasing the magnetic field. So basically, we are getting energy out of nowhere. So we know that this cannot be the case. Now, what happens when the current is flowing counterclockwise? Well, immediately we see that the induced magnetic field now opposes the initial magnetic field causing the induced current. And in that way, they balance out and everything is nice and physical. And that explains why there is the minus sign for the electromotive force in front of the rate of change of the magnetic flux. And this is known as Lenz's law. So how close are we to Maxwell's equation number three? So, so far, we have the scenario where we have a changing magnetic flux inducing a current in the loop. And we know that we've got this formal relationship between the electromagnetic force induced by the magnetic field is related to the negative rate of change of the magnetic flux. We would like to express this electromotive force in terms of the electric field. After all, what we are trying to do is we are trying to find a relationship between the magnetic field and the electric field. And that's what we are going to do in the next step. See you there.